y ya no vivo yo, más Cristo en mí. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. This is the first video vlog in my YouTube channel. So if you like it, please subscribe, hit the, the like button, share it, hit the little bell, okay? So listen, today I wanna to talk to you about a few things that have been on my mind. We have all been quarantined and 25% and of us can go out now, sort of. You can go to restaurants and stores and stuff like that. But listen, uh, I recently started hearing about this guy whose name is Captain Charles Plum. And Captain Charles Plum was a fire uh, a fighter pilot. And um, I wanna talk to you about the story of his sort of quarantine time. And uh, you can read more about it if you're interested. Uh, you can go learn about it in the book called Lessons from Hanoi Hilton. And that's by um, Taylor or whoever. Look it up, you'll find it. And, and I think you'll, you'll find you'll find that it's very interesting. He talks about prisoners of war during the Vietnam War. And so here comes uh, Captain Charles Plum. He was set to maybe be a NASA pilot and the, war, the Vietnam War happens. He's out there flying, gets into a combat battle and has to eject from his airplane. So he lands in enemy territory in Vietnam and he gets taken and he goes to prison. He ends up being in prison for six uh, six years, uh, a little longer than six years, and he tells a story, you could probably even find a TED, TED Talk, to be honest with you, and he tells a story where he had maybe eight, eight, uh, eight feet in his cell, and he would take three steps and then three steps back, and he was tortured, and he was questioned, and he was beaten, and he was living in this prison for, like I said, over six years. So one, one of the three things that, uh, that Captain Charles Plum talks about is having a packed parachute. It was so important for him to have a, a good packed parachute. And he, he talks about meeting the guy that actually packed his parachute and uh, shaking his hand one time and saying, hey, I guess it worked because he, he was able to land safely uh, from when he had to eject from the airplane. And listen, he talked about being in the, in the prison, how it was so vital for him to have a packed parachute and not just a parachute, but those things in, in his life, those experiences in his life, he talked about how the packed parachute for him was those experiences he learned as a kid, those instructions he learned from his parents and, and his family, and maybe uh, the, the things he learned at school, uh, things that you learned with community. Listen, um, as we're dealing with this quarantine, I want you to think about that because we have kids at home right now that, that are being homeschooled, maybe you're working from home, uh, the, the world is changing quite, quite a bit. And listen, we're packing our children's parachute. We're preparing them for the things to come in the future. Listen, they may have to uh, jump off of an airplane. May we be packing a good parachute. May we teach in, maybe we teach it, may we be teaching our kids how to thrive through adversity and how to not fall into fear, how to um, survive in, in uh, the next pandemic or the next crisis, how they can survive even when we lose our job or even when things don't look good, maybe when, when things change and, and stuff happens, right? So, so um, I want you to think about that right now. If you're a parent, if you're a mom, if you're a dad, uh, happy Mother's Day, by the way. Don't know when this is coming out, but we're in the month of May. So happy Mother's Day to everybody. But, you know, uh, have, have a packed parachute. Have mentors in your life or be a mentor to somebody. Maybe you're a Sunday school teacher. Uh, we're all kind of teachers at home right now, but maybe you're a Sunday school teacher. Maybe you ha you, there's a little kid at, down the block or somewhere in your neighborhood. Start packing uh, the next generation's parachute. And think about what uh, things were packed in your life uh, what what your par who packed your parachute? You know, what are the things that your parents taught you? What are the things that you learned at, at church? What are the things that that uh, have impacted your life and have made you the man you are or the woman you are so far? And the second thing that Captain Plum talks about is is that you have to drop an anchor. He says um, that the anchor is a stabilizer when the ship is in stormy weathers. 
listen, right now we're in a stormy weather ourselves, but he was in such a stormy weather and it lasted such a long time. He said he would not have been able to make it out and thrive if he hadn't dropped the anchor. And, and the anchor in his life was his purpose for life. It was his, his faith, it was his focus. Listen, we are in a stormy weather right now, so it's time for you to be anchored. What, what are you anchored in? Are you anchored in, in the news media? If so, you're gonna continue to write that storm and, and you may not make it. Uh, I hope that you are anchored in, in God's peace. Listen, I wanna read to you Isaiah 26 verse three says, you will keep in perfect peace those who, those who minds are steadfast because they trust in you. I don't know about you, but I am anchored in God. And I am focused, I'm focused. I'm spending this time right now thinking about what I'm gonna do when this is over. Listen, uh, be anchored into, into uh, a purpose for your life. What is gonna happen when you're able to go back? How are you gonna handle it? Uh, what, what is your foundation right now? The third thing that, that he talks about is a tug on a wire. So he tells a story about being in prison and how he wouldn't have been able to make it if, if he wasn't able to communicate with those around him. Listen, when, when he first went to prison, they beat him and he said he was bleeding from four different places and he was badly hurt and wounded. And then they started torturing him. And I can imagine that that was just terrible and he said there was only four things he was able to, to he was trained to say and one of them is his name his rank his number and I forget what the fourth thing was but um, he said that one of the things that really affected him was that when he was being tortured they finally broke him they broke him and and he gave them information that he wasn't supposed to tell him so then when he went to his cell he was really depressed and, and he was really thinking man uh my, my country's not gonna want me back i failed him i should probably die and he just had a, a terrible mentality but one of the things that just saved his life was that there was a, a there was a wire that was connected to his to his cell and he started tugging and, and he was able to reach and it had a little a little paper about this size with a little code to communicate and and the prisoners there were able to communicate through this through this code by tugging at this wire they were able to communicate with the, the people in the cells next to him and he talks about how how um, he started talking to this guy who had already been there for two years and so his cellmate, who was another American, another pilot that had, that had uh, had to eject and was a prisoner of war, and he, he starts uh, telling him, listen, I, I, I'm not doing well, I was tortured, I'm bleeding, and, and, and I, I gave up more information than I should have. And when, when he was starting to communicate all that, the, the, his, 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 his cellmate next door came back and said, hey, listen, you have a disease. This, and this disease is called a prisoner thinker. Imagine that, a prisoner thinker. He was beaten, he was hurt, he was bleeding, he had fallen, you know, he had had, had to escape off of this airplane that was being shot at, and, and now he was sitting in a cell that he could barely move, it was a wall, he had no windows. They had taken everything from him, they took his clothes, they took, they, they left him almost naked, and not even that, they even took his name from him. They gave him their own name uh, that they decided to, to name him in Vietnamese. So they, didn't, they even took his name from him. And he's sitting there and he's realizing, what are you talking about? We're sitting in a prison. Of course, I have, I have, a, 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 I have a, a prison mind and, and I'm a prison thinker. And he said, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it if you continue to have that mindset. Listen, he started to tell them, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We've all failed. We've all fallen. We've all given more information than we should. But right now, our commanders are giving us a new order. And the order is in, in three words. It says, return with honor. And he said, so buck up. Don't worry about it. You need, to, you need to change your thinking. You need to have a good anchor. You need to think about what you're gonna do when you get out. You need to refocus right now and only worry about returning with honor. And listen, you may be dealing with a lot of things right now. You may have lost your job. You may be sick. You may have somebody that, that is sick. You may be, you know, just uh, going crazy at uh, being a, 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 a teacher and, and a mom or a teacher and a husband or whatever. Uh, you may be, uh, have to 
have taken your college courses now at home. Uh, anyway, the, the world has changed quite a bit, but listen, right now I want you to think about uh, this, this tug on a wire because this time in, in quarantine, you need to be using it to, to think about different things, to, to have, instead of being outward focused into everything that's wrong in the world, I want you to be inner focused. And, and think about the things that, that'll bring honor once we're done. What, what are you going to do when we return back to, to normal life? What is it going to look like? Are you dreaming? Are you focused? Are you thinking about projects? Are you uh, thinking about your next job? Uh, what, are, what are you doing? Are you getting physically fit? Listen, uh, uh, those are some of the things that I'm doing. I'm, I'm working out. I'm thinking, listen, I need to be in good shape for when I'm done with this. I'm dreaming, I'm, I'm casting vision in my life, and, and I'm trying to get things organized for when this is done, I, I can run because I have a plan. So listen, Nelson Mandela, who also experienced his own quarantine per se, because he went to jail for many, many years in, in South Africa, he says the following, he says, the cell, meaning in, in his prison cell, the cell is an ideal place to know yourself. People tend to measure themselves by extending, by external accomplishments, but jail allows a person to focus on internal ones, such as honesty, sincerity, simplicity, humility, generosity, and an absence of variety. You learn to look into yourself. So right now, listen, many of us have wanted to go out to these amazing restaurants. We can't. Many of us wanted to go to these awesome malls. We can't. There's a, they, they took parks from us. We couldn't even go to the parks. And they took so many things that, that we were used to doing and now we're kind of prison at home. And, and you know what? It's crazy to, to know that domestic violence has actually gone up instead of gone down. Uh, families are, are fighting against each other and, and going crazy. Not only that, but, but suicide hotlines and, and, and mental facilities, the, the, the call centers, the percentage of, of call centers has gone up 850% over this pandemic. People are worried, people are anxious, people are, are, are not focusing on the right thing. Listen, I want you to know that, that it, I'm stressed out as well. Uh, I've, I've had days when, when I felt like maybe uh, a Captain uh, Plum and, 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 and I needed to tug on a wire. I've, I've had days when I've, I've had some anxiety and it's okay, it's okay, but don't stay there. Tug on a wire and have somebody tug back at you and tell you it's gonna be okay. Don't have that prisoner uh, thinking mentality. You just uh, uh, have joy. Have, have a good anchor, focus on what's to come, and listen listen, listen to, to this. This is something very important that's in that book that I'm telling you about, the Hanoi Hilton. It, out, of, out of all the prisoners that went to, to, that were in the Vietnam War, it was 591 of them, okay? Uh, only 4% of them came back with PTSD. And out of everybody else that went to war, which was thousands and thousands of, of soldiers that went to war, it was 30.6% that came back with PTSD. Imagine that. The, the guys that went to, to jail for months and years at a time came back and only 4% had PTSD. However, the ones that only went and fought had uh, over 30%. Of PTSD. Out of the 591 men that came back that were prisoners of war in Vietnam, 17 of them became generals, seven became admirals. Most went back to fly airplanes uh, around the world. And the last verse I want to read to you is Isaiah 26, uh, verse 3. It says that God's got you. It says, You will keep in perfect peace all those who trust in you, all those who trust are fixed on you. Listen. Fix your eyes on God, trust God, and he will keep us in perfect peace. That peace that surpasses all understanding. I can't wait to see you again in the next show. I just want you to, in the next video, not the next show, the next video, and, and I want you to subscribe, by the way, and I want you to know that it's time for us to rise up, it's time for us to cast vision, it's time for us to think about the future, our finances, our emotional life, our, our social life. What are we gonna do next? And I want to talk to you about that on the next video. Hope to see you soon.